I started back when I was very young. I, I, I was making amateur films, I was writing short scripts, and I was writing features, trying to teach myself. I had to teach myself how to write screenplays because I couldn't find a book on the subject and we didn't have a course on it. So I thought I would become a director, and uh, I, I did become a screenwriter. But I always loved writing books the most. And, um, you know, when you write a book, you're really like the head of the studio. You, you run the whole show, or you have a publisher. But in the book world, they give you more freedom than they do in films. In films, uh, the screenwriter is pretty low on the totem pole. And I had some good experiences on those AFI shows. I really enjoyed those, and I had a certain amount of freedom on those. But, um, you know, I wrote uh, Rock and Roll High School, which turned out well. Uh, but it was very collaborative. There were four other writers, and then there was the director, and you know, it was kind of a team effort. And it all turned out wonderfully because it was this unlikely combination of talents, you know. But we all contributed different things to it. And, um, you know, and then I, I wrote a Canadian film called Blood and Guts, which didn't turn out too well. And I wrote a lot of other screenplays, some of which I sold and some I didn't. And, but it's a very kind of. Um, not the most satisfying business to be in because you don't have a lot of control. The directors and the producers and the studios have a lot of control. And as a writer, I guess because I started as a book writer, I like to have control and autonomy. And um, I'm very uh, careful about my work and I, I, don't, I don't like it when people mess around with it. So I kind of thought, okay, I'll, I, I much prefer writing books. It's more fun. And it's more challenging too because, uh, frankly, one thing that happened was in the um, early 80s, I'd say, the film business turned kind of juvenile, that they started making, you know, the blockbuster mentality took over and they started trying to make films for the biggest possible audience and kind of dumb down the films going for the lowest common denominator. And I, I was more interested in making serious, dramatic, or comedic films, but films that had some substance. And I had a lot of ideas for historical films and things that people just weren't interested in. So I kind of thought, you know, it's much more intellectually challenging to write a book about Frank Capra. And that book couldn't have been written if I hadn't been in Hollywood for a long time. Because I learned a lot about the business when I was a student back in Wisconsin. My idea of how films were actually made was a little dim, because it was all theoretical and everything. So when I came out here and worked in the business, and I was a uh, reporter on Variety, interviewing people and going on sets, I learned an awful lot about uh, both the business of films and the art, you know, and the craft. So the Capra book, I poured all that knowledge into that subject and I really went all out and researched that to the nth degree and it turned out really well. It was a difficult challenge but very exciting. And he was a fascinatingly complicated man to deal with and his work was very political so I had to deal with a lot of political and historical themes which I that's uh, something I'm deeply interested in. 